questions about that? So, I am going to get to the 3D case now which is the reason why I dragged you through all of this. <clears throat> One very nice property that I want to point out here because it is harder to visualize in three dimensions is that I have used this parameter theta. If I change theta by some small amount say I change by a tenth of a radian or something then the amount of rotation changes by a small amount right. The rigid body will move by a small amount and it does not matter if I change by let us say if I go from 0 to 0 0.1 or if I go from 1 to 1.1 a change of 0.1 corresponds to the same amount of change for the rigid body. In three dimensions for 3D rotation it is very very hard to get that property back until you know how to do it. But if you were just to design something yourself that has that property. So, if I vary my parameters of rotation by a little bit how do I make the variation in 3D rotation be the same amount of little bit. And this is going to be very important if you do something like say design a filtering and tracking method because you want to measure the errors in your tracking and you want to do that in a consistent way. You know you otherwise you will get confused you will think you have huge errors over in this part of the rotation space and very tiny errors over in this other part when in fact the errors might be the same in terms of how much the body is actually rotating. So, that is the kind of difficulties we get into in 2D it's very easy to see these things it gets harder in 3D questions about this. So, I am going to go to the 3D case ok. So, now we go to um try 3D rotations um I do not think I feel like writing 3 by 3 matrices with a bunch of m's and subscripts and all of that. So, I will just write it with dots inside. So, we have bigger matrices now I will just write some dots here make it fast you can fill in the m's if you like. Um, so, now I have 9 degrees of freedom for a 3 by 3 linear transformation with real valued entries here. So, we start off with uh 9 dots and I want to use the same kind of reasoning now. <clears throat> Let us give names to these column vectors here. So, I will call this v 1 v 2 and v 3. So, I will use that to refer to these columns because if you remember in the 2D case we kept referring to the columns. So, I will just refer to those as v 1 v 2 v 3 and may also want to refer them as v x v y and v z, but I am I got to be careful because I do not want to make them look like scalar subscripts. So, so just say v 1 v 2 v 3 all right. So, constraint number 1 what was constraint number 1 anybody remember Let's see yeah. So, the, the lengths of the vector should be 1 right. So, if I take the if I square each of the components and add them up I should get equal to 1. I guess I can just write that using norm notation from linear algebra, but if you do not remember that anymore just square each element add them up. So, the norm of v 1 should be equal to the norm of v 2 should be equal to the norm of v 3 should be equal to 1 and so we started off with 9 dots um, how many did I just lose? 3 right. So, I lost 3 there. So, I have this these cons so this thing gives me a degree of freedom penalty of of 3 right. So, I lost 3 degrees of freedom all right 2 2 was this thing about inner products right. You have to avoid shearing. So, you have to have the inner products be equal to 0 right the, the dot products between the columns Wait, which columns do I pick what's that all of them all let us see well dot products there is not really a, a, a triple way product here right. So, we got to do it in pairs very good. So, we do all pairs from combinatorics let us see 3 choose 2 is equal to 3. So, there is 3 pairs it does not matter what the ordering is because dot products do not care about ordering cross products do. So, I guess I just need to pick the pairs here. So, I say ok I need to have v 1 dot v 2 equals 0 I need to have v 2 dot v 3 equals 0 and v 1 v 3 right get the other pair. So, I need to have uh, v 1 dot v 3 equals 0. So, when I put all of that together I guess I have lost 3 more degrees of freedom hey not bad it is doing the same kind of pattern as for 2D. Um, okay. So, we lost 3 more with these we still have the third condition which is um, we do not want mirror images. <clears throat> so, 
So, 3 we need to have the determinant of this big 3 by 3 matrix be equal to 1 and again this is not going to drop the degrees of freedom this is going to keep it the same it is just going to eliminate half of the cases. In fact, because every mirrored transformation has a corresponding one that is unmirrored it is getting rid of exactly half of them. So, in the 2D case as I said there was like a good circle and a mirrored circle and there was the true rotation circle and the, and the mirrored circle. We now have remaining some three dimensional set or three dimensional space of rotations we have three degrees of freedom we have to get our fingers on it somehow describe it in some good way. We have three degrees of freedom left and it was in two different components there is like the mirrored part and the unmirrored part this constraint eliminates the unmirrored part. So, if you want to have the mirrored part then just make the determinant be negative 1 All right. So, we are going to we are going to avoid that. So, by the time we are done we finally have um, which we should have we get all the way down here past these constraints and we have 3 dos for 3D rotations. All right. So, I am going to start off with a simple way to describe 3D rotations and then um, after that get to the more um, let us say appropriate way for doing the things that we want to do. So, to start off here and we will take a, a, a break shortly let me just um, start off here with the 3 canonical the 3 canonical rotations which are yaw, pitch and roll. So, these are going to be 3 independent parameters we can use to describe rotations they are the most I would say intuitive and easy for people to understand, but they cause a lot of trouble and damage later. So, so I am going to first introduce them we can talk about them they are they are they are helpful if you keep them separated, but when you combine them together you sometimes end up with a mess. Um, first of all just make sure we all know what we are talking about. So, um, so yaw is is going to be this right let us all do this together. So, yaw is like this right good then pitch. So, yaw is like no right and pitch is like yes and then roll is like this which if I understand head gestures around here means maybe right. So, I am not sure is that right. So, so we have yes no and maybe. So, um, so let us all do this together. So, yaw say it together yaw uh, pitch and roll roll right. So, keep those keep those straight it is very very helpful yaw pitch and roll. Um, so, let me just write out the matrices for these and then we will and then we will break um, yaw I will write it like this I will say it is a rotation matrix with a parameter alpha and it looks like this cosine alpha 0 sine alpha 0 1 0 minus sine alpha 0 cosine alpha. Um, this looks a lot like the two dimensional rotation matrix if you look at the corners and the center part looks a lot like the identity matrix right. So, the center part looks like the identity matrix because it is basically saying do not disturb the y coordinate. If I do a yaw back and forth notice that the um yeah notice that the y coordinate is not changing right y is up I forgot my coordinates for a bit here yeah y is is upward. So, notice y is not changing when I do this correct only x and z are. So, it is essentially a rotation in the x z plane that is why it looks like the 2D rotation matrix. Um, there is a little bit of uh, change with respect to it, but that is because these are appearing in the corner if you do a circular shift downward and over then it will look exactly like the um the 2D rotation matrix being applied. So, pitch is very similar we write r of beta let us say which which axis is left undisturbed for pitch. So, do this x is undisturbed. So, we can already guess that the x part is going to look like an identity matrix and then here in this remaining part this remaining block we just make the uh, 2 by 2 rotation matrix, but with a beta in it cosine beta minus sine beta sine beta cosine beta and then finally roll 
rho should leave the z coordinate alone then right. So, z is going back and forth z is the depth. So, z goes back and forth when I do a roll I should not be interfering with that we did alpha beta gamma. So, we will make gamma the parameter for that we get cosine gamma minus sine gamma sine gamma cosine gamma. So, the upper block is exactly this two dimensional rotation matrix, but corresponding to the x y plane and then the z part is the identity 0 0 1 0 0 1 All right. So, that is what we get and now if you want to generate any other 3 D rotation you just need to pick some amount of yaw some amount of pitch and some amount of roll and then you can apply them sequentially and uh, that will generate any rotation, but it might not provide and it in fact does not provide a beautiful representation in the sense that I mentioned where a small change in these parameters may or may not correspond to the same amount of change in actual physical rotation and that is the difficulties we will be getting to after the break.